Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video we are going to be looking at a past exam question. This particular one is going to be on reproduction. Now this particular question I chose is a little bit difficult. It's tricky um, and I say that because the questions are all application questions. Um, they require you to have pretty good foundation knowledge and our biggest problem is you know, ma'am, we learned this in class, but I don't know how they're going to ask it or how to apply it. And so this is a perfect example of applying your knowledge to a new situation. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. So let's get into the question. And there is a lot that we need to sort of go through here and digest and make sure we understand, starting with the extract. So it says, Anele found out that she had scar tissue blocking both her fallopian tubes. Um, for those of us who don't know what scar tissue is, it is tissue that has formed due to an injury potentially or an infection. And scar tissue doesn't have any major function other than holding um, tissues together. So it often forms um, in like a fibrous way. So I want you to keep it in the back of your head. Um, and it says, therefore, uh, could not have a baby. She decided to have what we call in vitro fertilization or IVF. And in vitro fertilization refers to fertilization that happens inside of a test tube. So it says the procedure was performed as follows. It says Anela was given hormone supplements to simulate the production of an ova in the ovaries. The mature ova was then collected and placed in a test tube. Her partner was then asked to release semen, uh, his semen into a special container. The ova and semen were then mixed together in a test tube. That's what in vitro means. And the more rulers that were that developed after a few days were then inserted into Anela's uterus. And the diagram below is a representation of how this procedure is done. So just to recap, they took out her ovum over here. They introduced a sperm cell in a test tube, a morula formed, and then they inserted the morulas, plural, back into her uterus. And this is how in vitro fertilization works, IVF works now, and they hope that as many of the morulas uh, form blastocysts or turn into embryos eventually. So let's look at the questions. And again, the questions are going to start from easy and then sort of progress into more challenging. So number one, explain why Anela's condition had prevented her from falling pregnant. So this actually doesn't start off with the easiest um, in the sense that if you don't know what her condition causes, you might not know what to say. But let's start with the basics, right? So first things first, what happens is scar tissue is building up over here, right? In her fallopian tubes on both sides. Now, all the knowledge that you simply need is what do fallopian tubes do? Um, or what is their main function or what happens there? Remember, the main function of the fallopian tube is fertilization. So if we are going to explain for two marks what is preventing her from falling pregnant, we're simply going to make a statement and then a reason. So our statement is the fallopian tubes okay, are blocked. And because they are blocked, fertilization cannot take place. You could... Um, expand on that further and say things like um you know a sperm cell and an egg cell cannot meet they won't be able to meet um maybe you could say the sperm cell will not be able to swim to the over because of the blockage but essentially we need to establish those two things one the fallopian tube is blocked and two fertilization cannot take place and that's why she cannot fall pregnant okay Pretty simple, actually. Um, just let's not get confused or get caught up on, on the expectations of the question. All right, moving on to the next one. It says, name one hormone that was given to Anele to ensure the ova were produced in the ovaries. This is a recall question. We should know this sort of off the top of our head. What is the hormone that stimulates the production of ova? And we should all know that it is FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. Moving on to our next question. It says, name one hormone that was produced by developing follicles in the ovary. Again, 
This should be a recall question. We should know this off the top of our head. The hormone that is produced by developing ova is going to be estrogen. All right, so those two are pretty easy. Moving on to our next one. 2.4.3 says, describe the events that take place in the test tube after fertilization until a blastocyst is formed. Now, you will notice that this question is out of four marks, which means it's going to require quite a bit of uh, detail in your answer. And basically, they are asking you to explain from fertilization to a blastocyst. So let's quickly put that into perspective of what we've learned in class before. We have a egg cell and we are combining it with a sperm cell. And this is what we would need to say for four marks. We know that when fertilization occurs, we end up producing a zygote, which will get you your first mark. That zygote undergoes mitosis, which um, then produces a ball of cells called a morula, which actually gives us our fourth mark. And what's interesting is for this fourth mark, an alternative answer, if you don't want to leave it at morula, because sometimes people think, oh, ball of cells, morula is one mark. That's okay. You could alternatively go a little bit further and say the following. You could say it uh, continues to divide to produce a blastocyst or a hollow ball of cells, because that's what we're going towards here. And that would give you your four out of four, right? But this fourth one now is like a, an option. You could either give end at Morula or you could continue and get all the way over to Blastocyst, as the question says, until Blastocyst. And again, you've learned all of this in class. Now you must just apply it. And so it's a pretty straightforward question that we need to answer. Moving into our last question. Now it says, explain one possible consequence uh, for developing an embryo if the corpus luteum disintegrates immediately after implantation. Now, you are not going to be able to answer this question if you don't know what the corpus luteum does. So this is a big deal, right? The corpus luteum is the structure that secretes progesterone. And uh, if we've forgotten, progesterone is the pregnancy hormone, right? It's what maintains the pregnancy. So what is the possible consequence? And you must explain it for three marks. That means you need to have a statement and then you need to follow it with two reasons. So the statement is going to be, you will no longer secrete progesterone. It's going to kill a pro for short, progesterone. Because you are no longer secreting progesterone, the reasoning now comes in. The endometrium will not be maintained. And if the endometrium is not maintained, then the pregnancy will not be maintained. And that results in a this carriage. So no longer secreting progesterone means the endometrium will not be maintained and the pregnancy will result in a miscarriage. Again, this is the most application-like question out of all of them from this section. You've got to apply your knowledge to be able to see what happens if you take the hormone away. Now, here is a look at the actual memo that they have provided. Taking note of that little thing I mentioned earlier for 243, there are some optional answers here. You don't have to have all of them. You can have any four of them. But I'd like you to spend some time having a look at this memo and seeing if you were able to answer it just as they would have liked. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.